Okay, so the next we talked about, okay, we're on hemophilia. The next hem, uh, hematologic disorder we're going to talk about is hemophilia. Uh, most hemophilias are X-linked recessive, but hemophilia is a hereditary uh, disorder. Uh, most are X-linked recessive, which means if the individual has two X chromosomes and one of them has the gene for hemophilia, they will not have hemophilia. If they have two X chromosomes for hemophilia, they will have hemophilia. If they only have one X chromosome and it has the gene for hemophilia, they will have hemophilia. So for a very long time, there were really um, no girl born or no with hemophilia because in order to have hemophilia an X, a person with XX chromosomes needs to have received an X with the gene for hemophilia from each parent. And until ways were developed to manage this disease, um, very few patients who had hemophilia would live to adulthood and be able to procreate. So there were very few men of the age to procreate who had hemophilia and who had an X chromosome with the hemophilia gene to pass on. So um, now hemophilia is treatable. They're still, it's still very high risk, but it is treatable. And so now um, it is more common um, for XX chromosomes to actually have hem hemophilia. Um, so the pathophysiology is there's a deficiency in one of the factors that are necessary for, for coagulation. So remember back to physiology. I'm gonna, not going to ask you to uh, remember the coagulation cascade. You don't need to know the names of all those individual factors. What you need to know is that if one of those factors is missing, that person is not able to clot. Okay, they're not able to coagulate when they have an injury. The most common is factor eight deficiency, but there are different, there are other different types. The only reason you need to know that is so that if you are caring for a patient you need, that um, has a factor deficiency, you need to know which factor because that's the one that would be administered. Okay, the severity varies. Um, but with hemophilia, a minor injury can cause severe bleeding. If I fall, scrape my elbow, it may bleed a bit, and then the blood's going to clot and the bleeding will stop. If I have hemophilia and I cannot clot, then that will just keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Okay, um, so minor injuries cause severe bleeding. You might not be aware, but when you have a minor joint injury, you can have some bleeding into that joint, but typically we stop that bleeding fairly quickly with the clotting process. So patients who um, have hemophilia will have bleeding into that joint space, uh, which is called hemarthrosis, and that causes damage uh, to the joint and results in decreased mobility uh, long-term. So it causes chronic pain um, because of the damage, damage to that joint and chronic um, uh, mobility um, in ch chronic difficulty with mobility. Um, injury or death can be either caused by blood loss, right? If we don't stop bleeding, we're eventually going to stop because there's no blood left, or by blood impinging on other tissues. And where we would really see that the most, um, you know, a massive collection of blood could put pressure on something, on some other organ, um, and cause dysfunction. Like maybe if we have a hemothorax, that could get large enough to collapse the lung. But we really want to think about the central nervous system. Blood impinging on the spinal cord, uh, that pressure can cause spinal cord injury. Blood impend impinging on brain tissue, if we have a bleed in the skull and it continues to bleed, it pushes the brain out of the way and it eventually can cause herniation. So injury or death can be caused either by blood loss or the blood is getting, it's in a space <clears throat> where it is causing damage to, the pressure is causing damage to other organs or other tissues. Um, 
diagnosis, a history of bleeding episodes may prompt testing, uh, family history, uh, may mean that if, if there's a family history, they may have every child in the family tested. There's genetic testing available for some forms, so fa families can find out if they um, have a gene for that particular form of hemophilia. Uh, what you would see is a prolonged PTT, okay? There's also more specialized testing to figure out which factor it is once they determine that a child has um, hemophilia. Management. Priority of management is to prevent bleeding episodes. So we want to avoid injury for this child. Activities should be chosen to allow that child to live as normal a life as possible while minimizing the risk. So they need to be directed toward physical activity because we all need exercise for health. Um, that's less likely to result in injuries. Um, so low impact activities, even running that can, that impact can cause bleeding within the joints. So activities that um, have low impact on the body, swimming might be a better one, but even competitive swimming or playing in the water. A lot of kids, when they're swimming, they want to play and wrestle in the water. Those are things that can cause injury. So we've got to be careful with that patient. And then need cautious dental hygiene. They'd be really careful not to start bleeding gums, they need a medical ID. Um, any procedure that can cause bleeding should be avoided and any med parenteral med should be avoided when it's possible. So it is, if they have, have to have a medication that has to be injected, sub-Q is preferred over intramuscular because they're less likely to have bleeds. Remember though that some meds we can't give sub-Q and if we're drawing blood, a venipuncture causes less injury than a heel stick or finger stick, okay? Uh, the patient should not have any aspirin. NSAIDs should be used with caution because that's gonna increase their um, likelihood of bleeding. And we need to always, always, as the professionals caring for that child, we need to teach the family this, we need to teach the school this. Anytime that child has any, anything going on, we need to have a very high index of suspicion for bleeding. So for example, anytime they have a head impact, they probably are gonna get imaging. Anytime they do bleed, bleeding has to be managed aggressively. We don't wait and see if it stops. They need aggressive management of that bleeding. Um, they, we also are going to replace the missing factor after that's identified. Primary prophylaxis is when that patient gets routine um, injections of that factor set, uh, before they have joint damage. Secondary prophylaxis is if they're getting routine injections of that factor after they've had a, a joint bleed. And then, uh, or then a factor is given with any injury. In mild hemophilia, there's a vasopressin actually stimulates factor eight production. And so it may be beneficial. Uh, we also want to do pain management. Regular low risk exercise strengthens the muscles and that may actually decrease episodes of bleeding because that provides more support to blood vessels. Family and eventually the child are taught to administer the factor. Um, schools need to know, uh, they need to be prepared for this child. The child needs to have a management plan. Um, factor replacement is very expensive. And um, when kids age out of being able to be on their parents' insurance, if they do not themselves have the ability to obtain insurance, that can be a death sentence because factor is very expensive. Um, these kids are more likely to need transfusions because we're trying to stop bleeding, but sometimes we still have to replace some blood. And there's a risk of in bloodborne infection, both from the transfusions and from factor replacement. Improved survival means that now we have children with hemophilia who are living to adulthood and they need to consider choices about what they're, uh, about vocation, what jobs are safest, what job, what can they do safely. Uh, they need to consider reproduction, and that's both from a personal safety standpoint, especially for someone who can get pregnant, and also from the standpoint of passing along a potentially de deadly illness, and then they have to deal with the financial impact of treatment as adults.
Okay, next will be uh, ITP.